Good evening, everyone. It's uh, it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday evening. It's 9.30 in the evening here in Sydney, Australia. Uh, I promised a video a day. Uh, I'm almost at the end of my day, so I thought I should try and make a video. Uh, I've struggled with it today, so bear with me, but let's try this one anyway. Okay, so if you read the um, if you read the Porsche forums, if you uh, watch uh, numerous numerous YouTube videos, you will see that the Bargain 911, the Bargain 911, is the 911 uh, 996, the 996 produced from was it 1999? Am I right? 1999, maybe earlier. 1999 to 2004. 2004, the 997 came out. As you know, I have a 997.1, uh, model year 20, uh, 2006, 2006. Uh, <clears throat> to me, the 997-911 is the true bargain 911. Forget about the 996, the 997 is the true bargain 911. That's right. Don't laugh, it is, it is. Let me explain why. You know, in my first, uh, in my first Porsche video going back to August 2016 when I was still searching for a 911, uh, trying to be sensible, which I'll put a card here or here, I forget which side it is, maybe it's that side. Uh, I talk about trying to be sensible buying a Porsche 911, trying to be sensible. I think that the, uh, in the end, the purchase of the 997 was very, very sensible. Of course, I could have spent less money. I could have bought a 996 and there were plenty available for, for, low, for low dollars, uh, probably maybe 30 to 40% less than the 997. But the 996, uh, I think, has an aging interior. I know some people like it, but it's an aging interior. It probably has more engine issues than the 997 with the IMS. Uh, it also, to me, is I don't like the front headlights. I know some people love them. Uh, I don't like them. Uh, I would always like the 997. I always used to see the 997 in, uh, in, 20, in 2005, 2006. I used to see it in the street and think, one day I would like to have one of those. And as you know, I bought one. Uh, the thing about the 997 is, is yes, it's more expensive, but it really is a true bargain. Okay, so number one, the purchase price. The purchase price is, yes, it's higher than the 996, but compared to the 1970s, 1980s, uh, 911s, as you know, the 997 is an absolute bargain. Uh, it has the classic styling, uh, it, it has a great engine, even in the base 3.6, uh, and it is... It is a lot cheaper, especially here in Australia, and I'm sure it's around the world too, I'm pretty sure it is. It's a lot cheaper than, than obviously the, uh, yeah, so it's a lot cheaper than the air-cooled. Uh, for obvious reasons, I mean, they've become, they're a lot older and they're a lot more classic now, I guess. And I love them, they're great, but they're very, very expensive. Uh, in 2004, I was tempted to buy one. Uh, I would have liked to have bought one, but at that time I just bought my uh, Audi and uh, I didn't have any money to do it. And that's when they were really low. That's when in Australia they were sitting around 30 grand. Obviously the, that market is gone. The new market to me is the 997. The 997, you know, the 997 is, is a true bargain. The price is a true bargain. Yes, it has some issues that have been documented with the IMS, but all in all, uh, it is a bargain. The second reason why the 911 997 is a true bargain is it is a great driving experience. You can watch one of my other videos about the 997 here. But the 997 is a great driving experience. The power to weight ratio, the, the, that, the true 911 feeling in the twisties, uh, the base 3.6 engine is a great engine, it really is. The gearbox, I love the gearbox, the 6-speed gearbox in, in the base 997 is fantastic. Uh, I don't have the short throw, and even without the short throw, it's got it's got a great feel. The clutch has a great feel. Uh, it's a great driving experience, and you know, for the price, it's a bargain. You know, the 997 is the complete package. It it has the Porsche DNA. It has every every element of the Porsche DNA. It's not missing anything. Uh, I know at the moment the 997 is not really a uh, 911 that is that is sought after as much as a you know, 964 or, you know, 993, um, you know, or you can't add the GT3 models into it, but, you know, a 996, uh, sorry, a 993 or a 964, it's not a sought after, but it will be. 
it will be. You can tell it's going to be. You can tell it's going to be one of those. You know, nine elevens that will. That will just get better and better. Another reason, which is probably the third reason, is the low cost of maintenance. Uh, in the past year, really, the car has not cost that much money. Insurance is relatively cheap. It's relatively cheap based on the Audi A4 that I had before, the Audi S Line A4 that I had before. Uh, I'm not going to get into exact costs, but it's probably, you know, it's probably $50 a month more to insure for a value, a car that's valued at four and a half, five times more than the Audi. Uh, so, you know, the cost for insurance is not that bad. Uh, and, you know, obviously that's with full no claim bonus here in Australia, but, and it's through Porsche insurance as well. It's not through a separate insurance company, it's through Porsche insurance, so it covers uh, a lot of things. The insurance is cheap. Service, uh, once again, the service cost. And I'm comparing this to an Audi because that's all I can compare it to because that was my last car. But even the service cost for the basic service and the major service, the price is not that much difference. I went to an independent for the Audi, I go to an independent Auto House Hamilton here in Sydney for the Porsche. And it's about the same, you know. It's the Porsche is slightly higher, but not a lot higher compared to what car you're getting. Compared to the car that you're driving and the and, and the feeling every time you get into the car, the Porsche is not that expensive to to service. Uh, the main cost, I think, the main cost, which is a lot more in the Porsche, is the tires. Uh, the tires were, <clears throat> I think, for the last set of tires that I bought was close to uh, when I changed it from the 20s to the 19s, cost about $1,900 for four PS2s here in Sydney, Australia. Uh, the equivalent type of tire for the Audi, I think, cost me about a thousand. So, you know, the tires are more expensive and of course, you know, consumables, you'll go through more tires on the Porsche than you will on the, um, on the Audi, especially the rears. So that's probably, that's probably a cost that is, is a lot more than, than, you know, a lower price car. You know, um, the, the issue with the IMS, if you're buying a 997 or you're looking for a 997, even if you're looking for a 996, and I've said this many times before and I'm not the only one, do a pre-purchase inspection, get a pre-purchase inspection done. Uh, make sure you have regular services, regular checks. If the IMS is replaceable, then you should change the IMS. Mine's a 26, uh, 2006 model, so it's not, but it's, it's out of the danger area. There is a small chance that the IMS can happen in my model, but, sorry, it keeps losing the focus because of the light in here, uh, but it's a small chance. And I think you, you, know, you can't let that ruin the, the ownership proposition of buying a 997. The 997 is a bargain. And it's, it's, it's a fantastic 911, it really is. So don't let the IMS scare you away. There is a video I made about it here a while back, you can watch that as well. The fourth reason why the 911, 997 is a true bargain is the interior. The interior, when the 997 came out, the critics were saying how fantastic the interior was, how much better it was than the previous model, the 996, of course. Um, you know, don't don't get me wrong. I like the older the older uh, 993. I like the 993, but the 997 to me has got a better interior. It's got a better interior. Sure, it looks a little bit dated now, but in general, it's aging really, really well. Uh, you know, it's it doesn't have Bluetooth, but you can get that fitted if you want, which which I've talked about before, which I'm thinking of doing. But in general, the interior is really well put together. Uh, there was one problem, like I said, with the air conditioning. The air conditioning controls, the, the cooling and the auto air conditioning controls, which everyone knows about. It's a known issue in the pre-07 models that the rubber finish wears off and people use black tip pen to color it in. So what I did was I just changed the air conditioning unit. Yeah, and that's an expensive cost. So that was a cost in the first year of ownership. Um, but that cost was factored into the cost when I purchased the car because I knew I was going to replace that. So that's $700 for that air conditioning unit was basically added to the cost of the car. So I don't see that as a, as a cost of ownership. That's just a cost of purchase. Um, but yeah, the interior is aging really well. I still think it looks good. You know, the center console in gray, it's not always great, but you know, it doesn't look that bad. It's still, it's still got a nice feel about it. And the fifth reason, and I guess the fifth reason is, is I guess the fifth reason is not really a reason, but I'm gonna call it number five because it's important. All of these things added up, and there's a lot more. This is just this is just the tip of the iceberg, and I just wanted to make this video today just to because it was it's been on my mind when I've been looking at uh, Porsches online. Um, but the fifth thing is is that it will become a future classic. 
the 997 in the base form. I'm not talking about in the Turbo or in the GT3. The GT3 already has God status. The 997 GT3 always has, already has God, Godly status. I'm talking about the 997 base Carrera that I have. And of course the Carrera S. Um, it will be a future classic. Uh, it, is, it is underpriced at the moment. Um, of course the 997.2 Carreras and Carrera S's here in Australia are selling for quite a lot of money. Uh, I think there are about, I think there's people asking 160, 165 thousand Australian dollars for a 0.2. But I wouldn't bother, I would get a 0.1. Get a point 0.1, get an 0.6 or, or later point 0.1, you will save money, you will have the same driving experience, you will not, the chance you have problems with the IMS is very, very thin, and you get a great car, you get a entry into the Porsche range, and you own your first 911. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching today, this has just been a short video. Um, why I think the 911, 997 is a true bargain. It is a true bargain. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. This is number two of my Porsche Christmas vlogs. Hopefully number three will come tomorrow. Please excuse me if it's late. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.